Okay, so we just uh, did a very quick look at implicit differentiation. And we're gonna use that to solve some inverse functions. So here, I'm gonna start off with this one. I'm gonna say y equals the sine inverse of x. Remember, as I, as I stated earlier, right, um, No, that's not correct. That's absolutely not correct. So I'm gonna take it away and it's gonna get banished into the waste can or the recycling. Okay, so this means the function that undoes sine. You guys would recognize this a little bit better if I switch this around so that it read x equals sine y. So if y equals the sine inverse of x, then x equals sine y. That's how you deal with inverse functions. Okay, no problem. Now we've got our um, implicit differentiation that we went over in the previous video. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, what's the derivative of x? It's one times dx. And what's the derivative of sine y? It's gonna be cosine y dy, and so then I can use algebra to solve that to get dy over dx is equal to dy over dx is equal to one over cosine y, and so dy dx is equal to secant y. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna leave it as secant y because I'd really like it to be a function of y, I'd like it to be a function of x. So I would like this, if I said f of x is equal to sine inverse of x, I'd really like f prime of x. So I'd really like x's to be over here. So here's a little uh, secret that's gonna come out in when we do trig integrals later in the year is I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say, oh, sine y. Well, sine y, y in this case is an angle. Let's make it that one. And sine y is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So sine y is opposite over my hypotenuse. Well, what's my hypotenuse? I don't see a fraction here, I just have an x. Well, I can write it as sine y equals x over one. So I've got opposite over hypotenuse, x over one is x equals sine y. Now, from Pythagorean theorem, you guys can work it out yourself. I'm going to say that this just like that, one squared minus x squared. And then secant, remember which sides of the triangle are secant. Well, secant is one over cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is hypotenuse over adjacent. So I'm gonna write this as one over square root of one minus x squared. So if f prime of x is sine inverse of x, then I'm gonna say that, I'm say, if f of x is sine inverse of x, then f prime of x is one over square root of one minus x squared. Okay, let's do another one. <clears throat> so you can also do cosine inverse and, and tangent inverse like that, and I encourage you to. Let's do another one. We haven't done this one yet. Y equals ln of x, or if I say f of x equals ln of x, what does f prime of x look like? Well, this is related. If we take the inverse of both sides, if we take the inverse function of that, what's the inverse of ln? The inverse of ln is e to the. So I can go 
e to the y equals e to the ln x. So e to the y is equal to x. And then I can do my derivatives here. Well, the derivative of e to the y is just e to the y. And because I'm doing implicit differentiation, it's not e to the y. It's e to the y dy. And the derivative of x is dx. So then I've got dy dx is equal to 1 over e to the y. Well, I just said right up here that e to the y is equal to x. So that means that dy dx is equal to 1 over x. And this is super important. I'm going to write it bigger. Really important that you memorize that. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Here's how you prove it, but the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Okay, so I think I'm going to do a roundup video and then we're going to be done with chapter 3.